There's a ton of intimidation around the entire world of making stocks, making bone broths, and it really is a bummer because it keeps a lot of home cooks away from making them. And I was definitely in that category not that long ago, just avoiding them altogether. I didn't think I had the techniques, I didn't think I knew what I was doing. But once you, once you understand the basics, which is pretty damn simple of just taking bones, putting them in water, and cooking them down for a long time, you're gonna have the most delicious substance that is gonna open you up to so many different meals in the kitchen. Now there are a ton of reasons we got to the point of intimidation and a lot of them have happened in the last few decades and you're starting to see a bit of a revolution back into bone broths and stocks. You even see stores that are exclusively selling bone broths which is really cool because people are understanding the nutritional value and just the flavor. I mean there are plenty of culinary cultures that just wouldn't really exist without these things which we'll get into later but it's so easy to just go into the store and pick up a piece of meat. We don't really have connections to our butchers. Things like that that just take us away from the understanding that these bones can really have value to our cuisine and we're really just not survivalists anymore. I mean, you know, back in the day you wouldn't be wasting any part of the animal because that's potential nutrition, that's potential flavor. And also for better or worse, the culinary world has evolved a lot over over the last few decades and you see a lot more skills, a lot more techniques and almost a lot a lot more rules when it comes to cooking and it scares the hell out of people because you ask one person how to make a stock and you ask another and it's two completely different things and you're just left confused and that is huge when it comes to making these things. There's so much different information out there and it's like, you know, what do I do? How do I make this? And the truth is, you put bones in water and you cook it for a while, it's going to taste all right. It's going to give you nutrition and it's going to give you flavor. And yeah, we've created a lot of skill to make these things refined and, you know, super clean and all of this stuff but it's really basic at the core of it. So I took a ton of bones and I'm gonna do four different style bone broths and I'm gonna use all of the techniques I know to almost run an experiment because I'm trying to learn as well. I wanna know if there are superior ways to do this. We'll do a little taste test at the end and see what we come up with. So one big debate is the difference between stock and bone broth. To be honest, you know, there really is not much of a difference. You're gonna throw stuff in water and cook it down with different techniques. You're gonna hear me use those words interchangeably, so just look at it as one thing for this video. One other thing I wanna talk about are the health benefits of stocks and bone broths, and it's a big reason why so many people are making this stuff again at home, because when you get, you know, the, the flesh of an animal, the meat, that is just one you know, nutritional part of that animal. But when you cook down bones, remember a lot of times you're, you're getting the, the bone minerals, the calcium, but you're also cooking down the ligaments, the tendons, the skin, the bone marrow. All of these things have the potential to unlock nutrition that we're not just getting from meat. One thing that you get from cooking all that stuff down for so long is collagen, and it's something that's hard to get in other places of your diet, but it's really good for your digestion, coats your digestive tract, it's good for your skin, it's good for your hair, it's good for your joints, it's good for a lot of things, and it's a big reason why I love making broths and stocks. And it's also the reason that this stuff is so jiggly. That is not fat. That doesn't mean you know, you're gonna get fat because it looks like jello. That is gelatin that comes from the collagen and it's one of the biggest health benefits of bone broths. So when you're trying to source bones, remember they might not even have them in your local supermarket. So what I would suggest is going to your local farmer's market or your local butcher and you gotta talk to people. You gotta go back in time and build the relationships the way it used to be and tell them that you want bones because a lot of times they might not even have them on them, but there are bones. If they're breaking down animals, they're gonna be leftover bones somewhere, but you gotta let them know that you want them and just ask them and you will get some bones in your life. So I went to my local butcher and told her I was making this video so she gave me the full rundown and pretty much gave me all of the good bones she had so I have pork bones, lamb bones, duck bones, chicken bones, 
a ton of different bones. And that's one other thing is you don't necessarily have to make one type of stock. It doesn't have to be one animal. You can mix bones for mixed flavors. Say you don't want a really beefy stock. Well, then you can mix in some pork bones to balance these things out. Okay, let's get after this. So the first bone broth I'm gonna make is with beef bones. And I had a nice variety. I had some knuckles, I actually had some marrow bones, and I just had some like stewed beef, which is also good. If you wanna use like short rib or something like that, there's a lot of collagen in the connective tissue. So if you cook it down long enough, you will still get the benefits of that. So one technique that you see a lot is roasting bones. So I took a pan, I put some oil on it, dumped in all of the bones, sprinkled on some more oil, and put that in the oven at about 450 for 20 minutes until those bones are nice and brown. Once they came out, I added those to a big old pot and scraped in all that fun on the bottom. That is a lot of flavor. You don't wanna miss out on that. And just let the bones cook down for about, I went 16 hours, but you know, this is one huge debate in the bone broth world. How long do you cook it? Anywhere from you know six to 48 hours, it depends on the size of the bones, it depends on the depth of flavor you wanna develop. I thought because these bones were big time, I, I gave them a little extra time. I gave them around 18 hours. So the key is getting this on a nice simmer. You're not trying to boil these bones, so I'm just gonna get it up to a few bubbles like this and keep that temperature the whole time. And as it cooks, you're gonna start to see a little bit of scum. You can totally skim that off if you want. I did that a few times, and then I just kept that on overnight at that same temperature. And when I opened it up, I got this intense beefy stock and I just actually skimmed off this layer of scum on the top, got rid of that, and then just pour off that bone broth right into a jar. You can freeze that or you can put it in the fridge, but make sure you give it time to cool off first. And then for this one, I actually added the salt after, so that's a big debate when to add the salt. That's part of the experiment. We'll see what works out better. So the next one I'm making is a roasted duck stock, which is one of my favorites, because I use this to make a lot of different style Asian noodle soups, which you know I love. And here are the ingredients. I'm using a whole duck carcass, which I'm gonna chop up. Then I'm using chicken feet, which actually have a ton of collagen. It sounds very weird, but there's all these tiny bones in the chicken feet, and once you break those down, you're gonna get a ton of collagen from those. So first I'm gonna chop up the duck into a few pieces just so it's easier to handle and fit in the pot. And then I'm going to roast them again, just like I did the beef chunks. When they come out, you're gonna just add that to a pot. And you can use a bigger pot than this, but I'm making four different bone broths, so you gotta use what you have. Then I added the spices and then I just topped it with water, brought that up to a simmer and just cooked that down for around five hours first. Now, because these bones are small, much smaller than the beef bones, I'm only gonna go for seven hours total, but you could go longer if you want a richer flavor, but I also like a more delicate flavor with the stock. So it's really up to you. The longer you cook it, the richer and more intense the stock will be. One technique I really like doing is saving the aromatics for the end of the process, because a lot of times you throw it all in there and those flavors mix together. So if you really want those aromatics to shine, just throw them in on you know the last hour or two. Cooked it down for another two hours on that simmer, and then I strained everything off. You know I picked through all of that delicious meat, and then you have an incredible aromatic roasted duck stock that you can use for so many different things. I like just keeping it simple with a little noodle soup here, some veggies, pure goodness. This video is brought to you by Audible, where you can get an incredible selection of audiobooks. And I'm a big time Audible fan because I love reading, I love listening to audiobooks. I love just gaining knowledge. You know, to be honest, when I was in school, I didn't read much at all. I wasn't a big reader, but once I got out of school and I started learning on my own, 
books and audiobooks, that's where I went to get knowledge because we gotta grow, we gotta learn things in this world. So even though I started a little late, over the last eight or nine years, I have covered a lot of ground and read a lot of books. And some of the most recent ones that I have really enjoyed are Irresistible by Adam Alter, The Truth by Neil Strauss, The Lost Art of Listening by Michael Nichols, and The Mask of Masculinity by Lewis Howes. Audible is offering you a free audiobook if you sign up for the 30-day free trial membership. So go to audible.com slash brothers green or text brothers green to 500 500 and start browsing. Pick a title, download it, start listening for free. Remember audible.com slash brothers green or text brothers green to 500 500 to start listening today. One of my favorite bones to use are pork neck bones because it's just a really nice mix of meat to bone. So when you cook them down, all of that meat breaks down as well and then you can use that afterwards, but you also have a ton of bone there to extract all of that goodness. So on this bone broth, I tried something completely new and went with some Mexican flavors. And I've got my pork neck here. I also have some pork trotters, which are pork feet. Gonna do a similar thing to the chicken feet and add a lot of collagen. Then I have some smoked peppers, which I think will really add a lot of flavor. So on this one, I took all the bones and I blanched them first, which is a technique that a lot of cultures use to remove a lot of those impurities. You'll see there's gonna be a lot of scum that comes off and you can dump all of that off and just wash off the bones. So you're gonna get a cleaner final broth. Again, this is an experiment, so I'm not saying this is necessary, but if you want something a little cleaner, go with that. Make sure you wash off your pot at the end if you're using the same pot, because a lot of it is gonna be stuck to the bottom of the pot. Then you're going to pour all of the bones back into the pot. I'm, I'm using a bigger pot here, I've got a massive pot. Add your spices, add your chilies. I'm also adding salt directly to this one to see what I like better. Do I like salting before or do I like salting after it's done? And then I cook that on a very low simmer overnight for about 18 hours total. And I love pork broths because there is so much fat and that, that meat really renders down. So I removed all of the meat, made sure I picked through all of that meat and check out this little bone graveyard. This is actually from the beef and from the pork bones. Pour that off into your container and you can put that in the fridge or you can freeze that once it's cooled down. The last one I'm gonna do is a lamb bone broth and it's something I've been doing a lot recently because there's a really good lamb purveyor at my local Park Slope Farmer's Market and I really just like the flavor of lamb broth. It's super intense. Some people think it's funky but I just think it's delicious. We're gonna go more on that Mediterranean Middle Eastern flavor profile where they eat a ton of lamb and we're gonna add some coriander, some cumin, some dried chilies and then we're gonna split open some onions and some garlic. We're gonna take the bones and put them in a pot and then just pile on all of the ingredients, pour over the water. And this one is the most simple technique because we're just gonna get that to a simmer and let that go overnight. We're not roasting the bones, we're not blanching the bones, it's just the dump and stir, because I wanna see what happens when you just go for like the lazy route. And a lot of people do this because they don't have time for those other techniques. One other thing I did was I added some mushroom stems because I was making that noodle soup you saw earlier. I had some stems from the shiitakes, threw those in, any extra flavor, don't put it to waste. Now when I remove the lid the next morning, that, that is intense right there. I am so excited to try that one. So get those bones out, same process, strain it off and pour that into your container and let it cool down. One other thing you wanna do is label them if you're making a few different types because when you freeze them, you might not be able to tell the difference between the stocks and the bone broths. So time for the taste test. We cook these at different times. We use different techniques. We use different flavors. So we're gonna see what we have. We'll start off with the beef, which is interesting because that has the lightest flavor. You would think roasted beef bones, but uh, I don't know. Wow, very beefy. It's almost like you can taste the, the marrow in there, which is a bit intense. That was the first time I used 
bone marrow. Very good, but very, very intense. Definitely could use some other flavorings. Remember, this one was straight up. No other flavors, just beef. Moving on to the lamb, we just threw everything in there. Let's taste this. That one's incredible. Well balanced. The flavors are coming through. Nothing's really singing, again, because we kind of threw everything together, but love, love that. that. That's a really intense lamb flavor, but I can, you know, this is almost concentrated right here. I can thin this out, no problem, and make so many different delicious, I'm already thinking of crazy stuff. Moving on to the pork. Wow. Super smoky from those peppers, a little spicy. I do like the smokiness that I developed from those peppers, but I don't know if I want an entire stock full of that. I'd probably rather add that later if I want that flavor in the dish, but um, really, really good. Pretty clean too, remember we boiled the bones. Nice, it's, you can taste a little more, a little more refinement in that one right there. And then we have the duck, the roasted duck. Mmm, that one's amazing from those intense spices like the cloves that, I love that one. Um, but you know, it still tastes like a lot of flavor that we got in just a few hours. I don't know, they're all pretty good. They all have different techniques, but you know, ultimately they're bringing a lot of flavor to the table and they're bringing a lot of nutrition, which is the most important thing. So don't get too caught up in the technique side and just, you know, put some bones and some water and cook them, add some spices. You'll be good to go. You'll still be unlocking some incredible, tasty stock that will take your cooking to the next level. You'll be able to make incredible soups, incredible stews that are so much better than using this store-bought stuff. Please avoid that. If you can, make sure you subscribe to Life by Mike G. You'll be seeing these updates, like I just did a bone broth video, just quicker videos that I put on there for you guys to learn how to cook. And subscribe to Brothers Green and I'll, I'll see you soon.